I'm Dr. Joseph M.D., Department of Sociology, University of Mumbai, and this is the e Sala project on religion and society. We are in Module 26, which looks at ideology and practice of communalism in India. Communalism is a very specific, spe specific word which is used to, to denote certain specific kind of practice in India. Communalism does not have the same shade of meaning elsewhere in the globe today. In India, communalism has acquired a very specific meaning in a very specific Indian context. In this module, we will look at this context and these meanings. Now, what is communalism? One of the first persons who have actually done a lot of research on this is Vipin Chandra. And Vipin Chandra looks at communalism, uh, uh, defines communalism as a way in which a particular people belonging to a particular religion define themselves or understand themselves as having common interests by virtue of their membership in that particular religious community and thereby construct a kind of a commonality and thereby also look at other people, people who are not belonging to their religious affiliations and ha as having interests very, very different from theirs. And therefore, there is a, a kind of a, a chasm, a kind of a, a fissure that gets um, constructed between these religious communities. And this is what Pipin Chandra would call as communalism. Now, communalism in that sense um, has evolved in India over a period of time. Uh, historically, some would say that communalism has uh, at some level taken root because of colonial intervention, where the colonial rulers, the Britishers, uh, targeted or looked at Indians in terms of essentialized religious identities as Hindus and Muslims. One of the examples that they give is how in 1905 the division for the division of Bengal uh, in, in religious uh, kind of limitations through uh, as the uh, based on Hindu and Muslim kind of identities gave rise to this polarization and how these kind of divisions and these kind of approaches have uh, in that in that sense increased this polarization over a period of time and then gave rise to these particular solidified essential identities as Hindus and Muslims. Now communalism is a kind of an explosive idea we know because uh, the kind of history of communal rights that we have witnessed in India makes it a very kind of a, a potent kind of uh, a topic to study and and more and more researches need to be done into the, in this in this particular area of communalism and in this module we are looking at this exactly at this how have communalism become a part of the Indian political social and cultural life and how this is being played out in India today. Now, uh, the, uh, at, the, at the heart of communalism is this particular idea of uh, drawing boundaries, drawing boundaries between who we are and who they are, and these boundaries are drawn in when very, very particularly concrete levels, uh, thereby enger engendering a, a lot of uh, misconceptions, stereotypical kind of understandings, and, and some are actually some of these understandings and misconceptions are widely spread today through the social media as well and so there is a there is a way in which this kind of a mistrust this kind of uh, um, i mean solid essentialized boundaries that are being drawn on religious lines and this has this process has uh, thrived a whole lot of time and it is taking on new forms in every age and these new forms and the context in which these new forms are taking shape and the, the kind of a relationship it has to and uh, has got to an earlier uh, kind of an epoch of colonial period and colonial history. This is what we are going to examine in this module. What is communalism? Generally understood, communalism is rivalry kept and practiced by one community or religion towards another or each other. Bothering only about the well-being of one's own religion, people of one's own religion viewing the welfare of another community as a threat is a common characteristic of communalism. 
In the words of Satish Sabarwal, communalism in our sense means the channeling of personal sentiments and actions primarily with reference to the ascriptive group whose boundaries are determined by the accident of one's birth. In his book, Gyanendra Pandey argues that the opposition to each other's of religious communities is commonly designated as communalism. Many scholars hold the view that communalism is not essentially a product derived out of religious feelings, it is a form of politics. Prabha Dikshit in her book, Communalism, A Struggle for Political Power, states that communalism in India is neither the reaction to anti-communalism nor an outgrowth of religious and cultural differences, but it is a triangular power struggle of the elite. According to Vipan Chandra, communalism is the belief that because a group of people follow a particular religion, they have as a result common social, political and economic interests. In the concluding remark, we can say that communalism is an ideology which consists of three elements. One, a belief that people who follow the same religion have common secular interests. Two, a notion that uh, in a multi-religious society like India, these common secular interests of one religion is dissimilar and divergent from the interests of the followers of another religion. Three, the interests of the followers of the different religions or of different communities are seen to be completely incompatible, antagonistic and hostile. Communalism is political trade in religion. Meaning of Communalism and Communal Violence In seeking to explain the persistence of communal violence, Brass draws a functionalist theory and argues that communal rights have functional utility and benefits for a wide range of groups and organizations in society, particularly the Bharatiya Janata Party and other political organizations affiliated to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. He points out that Hindu-Muslim divide and polarization, which is rooted in the discourse of communalism and militant Hindu nationalism, has been extremely valuable to the political fortunes of the Bharatiya Janata Party. In a, Bour in a Bourdieuian sense, different societies have different norms, but the practice has importance to create the hegemony and domination. Therefore, the construction of the otherness perform the ideology of communalism. In his book, Communalism and Communal Violence in India, Asghar Ali Engineer states that communalism is a modern phenomenon and its fundamental causes are secular like competition for share in political power or government jobs. Religion is not its fundamental cause but an instrumental cause because it has great mobilizing power. In other words, he argues that one must distinguish between religious violence, the reason for which lay in sectarian and doctrinaire differences, and communal violence, the reason for which lay in conflict over controlling political power and economic resources between in the elites of two communities. It is precisely for this reason that communalism is born of secular issues and communal parties are led by or communalism is promoted by secular leaders. It is not therefore surprising that the Muslim League in the pre-partition period was led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah, a thoroughly westernized, even modernized Muslim, and chief ideologue of Hindu Mahasabha, happened to be Savarkar, who had a modern outlook and stood for reforming Hinduism from within. Neither the Muslim League nor the Hindu Mahasabha was led by a Mullah or a Shankaracharya. In the context of the macro level, communalism is the class nature of the society on the one hand and the underdevelopment of the economy and the scarcity of the resources on the other. In the opinion of TK Uman, there are many dimensions of communalism and he suggests six important dimensions. Assimilationist, welfareist, retreatist, retaliatory, separatist and secessionist. Assimilationist communalism is one in which small religious groups are assimilated into bigger religious groups. Such communalism claims that scheduled tribes are Hindus or that Jain, Sikhs and Buddhists are covered under the Hindu Marriage Act. Welfareist communalism aims at the welfare of a particular community, say improving living standards and providing education and health. Such communal mobilization aims at working only for the members of one's own community. Retreatist communalism is one in which small religious community keeps itself away from politics, for example the Baha'i community. Retaliatory communalism attempts to harm, hurt and ensure the members of other religious communities. Separatist communalism is one in which one religious group wants to maintain its cultural specificity and demands a separate territorial state within the country. Lastly, Secessionist communalism is one in which a religious community wants a separate identity and demands an independent state. According to Asghar Ali Engineer, there are two categories 
religious revivalism and religious fundamentalism as far as, far as India Indian socio religious scene is concerned in the context of religious revivalism he includes the babas the yogis and other religious gurus who cash in on the growing sense of insecurity urban tensions and other stresses generated by the modern industrial pattern of life genesis of communalism when we trace the genesis of communalism we can see that it is not a very old phenomenon studies in this area prove that communalism was not developed or practiced as an ideology in ancient period or in the medieval periods gyanendra pandey states that many have underlined the fact that communalism as we know it is a very new phenomenon far from being of hoary origins or even of very long standing it is a development of the late colonial period arising concurrently with nationalism if not being brought forward as a counterweight to it communalism began to spring up only in the co- in the colonial and capitalist society and reached its heights in the democratic society as a basis of communalism lies in the competition for modern achievement and urge for political supremacy this cannot be traced in the ancient or medieval period if we discuss about indian society we will find that ancient india was united and no such communal feelings were there in medieval period we have had examples such as akbar who was a pitom of secular practices and believed in propagating such values by abolishing jizya tax and starting dine ilahi and ibadat khana some acceptance for different cultures and tradition was practiced uh, throughout the different kingdoms of india Communalism in India is a result of the emergence of modern politics which has its roots in the partition of Bengal in 1905 and features of separate electorates under the Government of India Act. Bipin Chandra argues that communalism developed in certain areas and sections of society due to their failure to develop the new national consciousness. In other words, communalism was generated by the lack of deeper penetration of nationalist outlook and ideology. what happened in 1920 or thereabouts to bring about this great change when nationalism and communalism emerged as contrapuntal ideologies intimately related to each other in mutual antagonism according to pande secular nationalism contributed substantially to the emergence of communalism because it resolutely sidestepped religion in the public sphere and instead emphasized religious tolerance and a distancing from parochial ties why communalism still persists and is still increasing in modern india Regarding the many definitions like communalism is above all an ideology a false consciousness a struggle for scarce resources competition for jobs and instruments of ruling class politics Regarding some questions is is communalism a static phenomenon or is it something which can, which has changed over a period of time um we can see that communalism operates at different levels ranging from individual relations and interests to the local institutional national politics to communal rights KM Panikkar argues that there is a whole range of social relations and politics over which communalism pervades today this spread of communalism involves two interrelated central issues first is the state of consciousness in a society and the second is communalism as an instrument of power not purely for capturing state power but operating in political social and economic domains and at almost all levels of social organization that is communalism and communal mobilization that Uh, is based on a perception that there are identities which are based on religious belonging such an identity can be man- manipulated for purpose of power at various levels in indian politics the main root of maximization of votes is communal mobilization on local level to urban level in this context panika says that political parties organized around communal ideologies and organized their programs around communal goals For instance the Muslim League during the pre-independence period had an Islamic state as its goal. The Hindu Mahasabha during the same period stood for Hindu Rashtra. They had explicit religious and communal goals. In contemporary India the best example of this political formation is the Bharatiya Janata Party. We can see that the BJP's main plank is Hindu nationalism on the basis of Hindutva ideology. They explicitly make their political program around a communal goal that is Hindu nationalism. In this in his article what is communalism today Pandey states that the first major manifestation of that trend was the Hindu Kalash Yatra which was in fact a precursor to uh, what the BJP and the BHP are doing today its call for revival of hinduism combined with the fervent nationalist pride 
proved to be a popular and the organization grew rapidly we are familiar with golwalkar's pitrubhumi punyabhumi qualification for a true national of course muslims and christians on account of their holy land being outside the boundaries of bharat mata are perpetual suspects ghar wapsi is an ideological project to produce the loyal citizen for the hindu nation state for the vishwa hindu parishad for a change of faith from hinduism to buddhism jainism or sikhism for that matter doesn't dismember the hindu nation but one do islam and christianity does in the context of ideological state apparatuses we want to draw attention that the rss has opened many schools hospitals and charity work violence seems most likely in areas where there are politicians are supported by local networks of extremist organizations and individuals who specialize in creating and maintaining communal tensions these networks according to paul brass are institutionalized riot systems as such actors keep communal tensions alive throughout the years through a steady infusion of communal ideology a precipitating incident can easily be interpreted as an instance of broader communal conflict If the activities of these networks are not kept in check either by the police or by the civic bodies large scale violence may develop economic and social disparities economic tensions between the two communities lead to social tensions which can easily be turned into communal tension by exploiting certain situations on the occasion of religious festivals the behavior of the society is based on the culture prevailing in that society Social imbalance due to unequal growth of population can be pointed out as a factor constricting the growth of communalism. In her article Consensus Communalism and Gender and Identity, Charu Gupta explains how the fertility rate checked with the domination of the context of population and control sexuality. She covered the form of communalism in the context of gender and sexuality. Hindu propagandists argue that the loss of a Hindu widow was not just the loss of one person but of many more moreover these numbers were subtracted from the hindu population but added to the muslims doubling the loss to the hindus one tract hamara bishan has a collection of articles reprinted from newspapers dwelt on the catastrophic decline of hindus due to growing conversion here we see a combination of the negative portrayals of the muslims stereotypes about sexual desires of widows as well as fears of the agency of the widow judiciary and communalization the role of judiciary in matters of religious arena we see that it holds the debate between secular and the communal in her article religious freedom and state intervention gurpreet mahajan argues that the judgments of the court are not free from biases and perform the ideology and practice in the context of hindu ceremonial law we can see that in the case of uh, uttar pradesh up prevention of cow slaughter act of 1956 supreme court has upheld the prohibition of cow slaughter on the grounds that the ban was in the interest of the public order the validity of this act was questioned from another perspective in the mh qureshi versus the state of bihar case here the petitioner claimed that the proposed ban on cow slaughter prevented him from observing the muslim community's religious practice of sacrificing a cow on the occasion of bakrid In this case Supreme Court argues that sacrificing a cow is an optional practice for a Muslim which is mentioned in the Quran because a person could easily sacrifice a goat since cows are valued as divine entities by Hindus so cow is not obligatory for Muslims once again it was assumed that hurting the sentiments of any community would not be in the interest of the public order it is clear that the judgment performs the ideology of false consciousness and construction of otherness in this module we have looked at this very particularly relevant word for indian society and indian religion which is communalism communalism has been looked at from very different vantage points the vantage point of history the vantage point of religious studies the vantage point of the contemporary indian social life this is what we have seen in this module thank you